Hello! In this video, I'd like to talk to you about what a wave function is, and I'm going to do it very quickly and without a huge amount of detail. If you'd like to follow me on the internet, here's how you do it. And in particular, I'd like to draw your attention to Patreon, where if you like what I do and you'd like to support it, that is the place to do it. Now, let's begin. Our starting point is going to be the scalar dot product. So let's take an arbitrary vector living in 3D space, known as Euclidean space. And we're going to use the basis vectors i hat, j hat, and k hat. These are the unit vectors i hat, j hat, and k hat. Or these are the basis for the state. And we know that we can expand a as a linear combination of the coefficients a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z with the corresponding basis state i hat, j hat, and k hat. Now I'm just trying to use the language we'll be using in quantum mechanics. That shouldn't be new to you, and neither should this, that if you take the scalar product between any of your basis states and your vector, you'll get the corresponding coefficients, a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z. Which means we can re-express a using this scalar product notation here. And if you understand this step, you're going to understand what a wave function is. So let's move on. I'd like that you consider what would happen if I asked you to try and figure out what these pairs of numbers mean. I'm trying to figure out what, what it is that they represent. Most likely, the first thing you'd do is you'd plot them. Here's a plot of the numbers, and it seems that it, it, it represents something meaningful in terms of a physical sense. It's got a particular defined shape to it. But it still hasn't told you a whole lot about what it is representing. Now, for reasons which will become clear later, let's suggest that you think, or you know maybe, that what you're representing here is in fact a vector. And I'm going to call the vector A. And let's say that you know you're able to express or decompose A as a linear combination of various basis states. So the basis states I'm going to call are the x sub n's. These are discrete basis states. And here are our coefficients c sub n. So previously the c sub n's might be the, the a sub x's and the x sub n's might be i hat, j hat, or k hat. So the point here is these basis states, these x sub n's, are discrete, and we're taking a linear combination of those. And in fact, that linear combination gives us exactly the list we have at the top of the screen. Now, precisely because we are dealing with vectors, we are able to re-express the c sub n's, the coefficients, using the scalar product. By the way, this symbol here means to represent. So A is represented by this particular power series. And because I'm actually using the basis vectors here, actually A is equal to this. So I've redrawn our particular plot. To be clear, what we're plotting are the coefficients, the C sub n's, against the discrete states, the X sub n's, the discrete basis states. And for each point in space, it corresponds to the state, that's the X component, and the particular coefficient, the c sub n, which we know can be written itself as the scalar product between the basis state and the vector. So pause the video now if you want to take this figure in a bit more. We're basically at the wave function already. So if you understand that an arbitrary vector a can be re-expressed as a linear combination of coefficients with their basis states, the x sub n's, which are discrete basis states, and you understand that we can do a sleight of hand and use the dot product to express the coefficients, then you know what a wave function is. So let's accept for the moment that the actual plot that I have corresponds to this particular function. That means the c sub n's are in fact this. Now, if you don't believe me, just plot this and you'll see, but that's, that's the specifics of the c sub n's. Now, I'm going to use a bit of a sleight of hand so we're actually summing here, and in reality we're talking about the area under the curve, but we're missing the width of our Riemann sum boxes, our rectangles, and the, the width of course is going to be delta n, which is 1, and that's why we didn't need to have delta n up here, because it's just 1. But if we put it in, it'll illuminate something very special, which is basically going to be the wave function. But to be clear, we're talking about discrete basis states, x sub n's. So what would happen if delta n was to shrink 
or and the basis states were to become continuous. Well then in the limit our vector a is going to be given by this particular integral here. Note that the or the excuse me the discrete x sub n's have become continuous x's and also the discrete states the x sub n's have just become states x. So our basis is just the continuous variable x. And it shouldn't take much to, to see that this of course here is a function of x. So we're able to re-express a using this function of x which we give the placeholder psi and we call the wave function. So what does that mean in English? It means if we have a vector and it's described by a continuous set of basis states then the function which describes the coefficients for each of those continuous basis states is called the wave function which looks like this of course so pause the video there a moment if you want to gather your thoughts because we're about to conclude so I've said it at nauseum. If we have in Euclidean space, say, an arbitrary vector a, we can break it up into a linear combination of the basis states i, j, and k, which can be expressed in a neat way using the scalar product. Now, in quantum mechanics, our vectors or our states are known as kets, and this is the symbol to uh, to represent a ket. So we're saying that the ket is broken down into a linear combination of basis states, and these are discrete states or quantum states or quantum kets x sub n. We know that we can re-express those particular coefficients using a dot product. Now the generalization of the dot product is known as the inner product and that's what is given here. Even if you're not familiar with the inner product, if you understand what the dot product is then you should understand what that is. This of course is where the basis states are discrete. And if the basis states become continuous, then we get this representation of our vector. And we know that this quantity here is known as the wave function. So let's return to our previous example, where we have the same set of points plotted in space. And what we're going to do is plot the c sub n's against the wave function, or excuse me, against the basis states. So we have our c sub n's given in the inner product notation here, and we have our discrete states, the x sub n's down here. And this is what you'd expect if our basis states are discrete. So, you should know what happens when the basis states become continuous. We get this representation here. And the function which describes all of the coefficients which is given by this particular plot is known as the wave function. And this only works when your basis states are continuous. And finally, so while a ket isn't a wave function, if you're talking about continuous basis states, we can represent our ket, so this is the ket f, it's in the basis of the position states which happen to be continuous, and although it's not equal to the wave function, we say it's represented by the wave function, and that's why we put a little dot on top of it. So basically, if your basis states are continuous, you can do all of your calculations using the wave function, and they will give you the results for the particular arbitrary quantum state or the quantum ket. So that was nine minutes. I hope you like it. If you do, please pass it to your friends and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.